So following direct variation and basic introduction to linear functions, we're going to be looking at more features of linear equations and linear functions in this lesson. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the items listed here. Point-slope form of an equation, standard form, parallel lines, and perpendicular lines, and the characteristics that are necessary to achieve each of these items. So let's get started with point-slope form. Point-slope form is a way of writing linear equations that takes on the form of y sorry let me use some color coding on this y minus y1 which is equal to m times x minus x1 where in this form we have a slope that is provided or found as m and it passes through a given coordinate that is x1 and y1. So all you have to do is plug in the values into this form and you're able to build up an equation in this point slope form. So two different ways of going about this that's based on whether or not we are given a slope and a point or simply given two points let's go with the slope and point first if we're told that a slope is three quarters and that our line passes through the point six negative three then we can use this information to go through and build our point slope equation. We simply start with our basic form which is y minus which is equal to m times x minus and then we start filling in values. It's y minus y1. Well our y1 is negative 3, our slope is 3 quarters, and our x part of our coordinate is 6. Now we simplify this expression or this equation, so we have y, we can subtract the negative, that's the same as adding. So it's y plus 3 equals 3 quarters of x minus 6, and we now have an equation written in point-slope form. Point-slope oftentimes is the easiest form of an equation to write, because you don't have to go through and distribute, you don't have to find a specific value, it will work from any point with a given slope. So what happens if we are not given the slope? Let's say we're given two points. Let's say we're given the points 5, 3, and 7, uh, 7. And we need to go through and write a point-slope equation. Well, in order to do this, we need to figure out what the slope is. Slope, if you'll recall, is the expression of change of y divided by change of x. So how much do our y's change if we go from 3 to 7? That's an increase of 4. And how much does our x change if we go from 5, sorry, let me undo that, from 3 to 7 for our y's? How much do our x's change if we go from 5 to 7? Well, that's a change of 2. We simplify our fraction and we have a slope of 2. So now we have two different ways of writing this equation because we have two points that are given. We can go y minus 3 equals 2 times x minus 5. Or we can say y minus 7 equals 2 times x minus 7. And both of these are equivalent equations. We can show this by going through and solving each one for y. So in the first one, we end up with y equals, I'm going to distribute my 2, I get 2x minus 10, sorry, minus 10. And then I added 3 to get y by itself, so plus 3. I come out with y equals 2x minus 7. Now, Solve the other one for y, I get y equals 
2x minus 14 plus 7 brought over from the other side, which is y equals 2x minus 7. So each of these will simplify down to the same slope-intercept form of equation, therefore showing that they are the same. Point-slope form, easiest to work with, just need to memorize the form of the equation. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Next, the next form of the equation that we have is the standard form. Now, standard form equations are those that can be written after the model ax plus by equals c and I've always learned it that a, b, and c are all supposed to be integers. So whatever it takes, unless what you're given is an irrational number which is very rare, a, b, and c are to be positive or negative whole numbers. So let's start with an equation. Let's use the one that we just had, where we had y equal 2x minus 7. We need to convert this into such a form so that the constant is by itself on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Everything else is on the left. If I were to solve this equation, I would subtract 2x from each side, and I would come out with negative 2x plus y equals negative 7. And you now have a standard form. Not always will it come out to be so neat and clean if we're given the equation y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5 6. We need to solve this in such a way so that our constant is by itself and we have only whole numbers. So I'm going to start by adding 2 thirds x to each side. So I get 2 thirds x plus y equals 5 6. And then I need to get rid of my fractions. So what's the lowest common multiple of our denominators, 3 and 6? And that is 6. And we'll multiply this entire equation by 6. 2 thirds times 6 is 4, so I have 4x plus 6y equals 5. I now have an equation written in standard form. When it comes to graphing, standard form is fairly convenient because you simply need to solve for what are called the intercepts. Find out what it takes to make x and y 0, and then what's resulting afterwards. An equation that will work for this if I have 3x plus 4y equals 24, I make a quick and easy table of x, y values. Say, if x is 0, what does y have to be? Well, 3 times 0 is 0, so 4y equals 24, then y has to be 6. There's my first point. Now, my x-intercept is if y is 0. 4 times 0 is 0, so 3 times what equals 24? And I get 8. I now have two points, 0, 6, and 8, 0, that I can draw my line off of. So graphing from standard form is pretty quick. Just do a table of values for your two intercepts. This covers the majority, or the all three forms of equation written for linear functions. Slope-intercept, point-slope, and standard. When we're working in linear equations, we do also need to know how to make parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are lines that will continue on in both directions forever and never meet. So the thing to remember with both parallel and perpendicular lines is it's all based around your slope. Parallel lines, the slopes, are identical. So whatever the slope is on one equation, the slope will be the same on the other. Now with perpendicular lines, it's important to remember slopes are inverse 
reciprocals. Which means that the fraction is turned upside down and the sign is changed. So in both of these, we're going to build off of the same general setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it, the equation for a line parallel to y equals 2 thirds x plus 6. And I'm going to write the equation for a line that's perpendicular to y equals 2 thirds x plus 6. And both of them I'm going to have passing through the point 12, 7. So the first thing we do is we write our general form. So easiest, as mentioned, is going to be your point slope form. So I'll have y minus equals x minus for my parallel line. Now parallel slopes are identical. So I had a two-thirds slope before. I'm going to have a two-thirds slope now. And then I simply plug in my x and y values. And no simplification is needed, so here is your function. We could go through and simplify this. y equals 2 thirds x minus 8 plus 7. 2 thirds of 12 is 8. Added 7 to both sides. y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. Now, doing it for the perpendicular line. Again, we start with our base form for point slope, y minus equals x minus, plug in our x and y values, 7 and 12, and then our slope is a negative reciprocal. So our slope originally was positive 2 thirds, so I'm going to make it negative 3 halves. Here is our basic function. We could leave it this or convert, so y equals negative 3 halves x plus 18 minus 7. 3 halves of 12 is 18. Negative times negative is positive. Now, simplifying this, y equals negative 3 halves x plus 11. So I now have equations written in both forms, parallel and perpendicular, for both point slope and slope intercept from the given data. These take a little bit of practice, remembering which type of slope works for which one. Go back, review the lesson, take notes, and be ready to use this material.